This video explains how to install and operate the Mighty Mice software. Mighty Mice is used to make PowerPoint slides come interactive in a classroom. It can be used in developing countries or in developed countries alike. It's currently an incubation project within Microsoft. Mighty Mice can use wired mice. This is quite cheap. The way you do it is you just hook up several mice to a single hub and lay these out. You connect all these hubs together and then hook that hub up to a computer to make all the mice connected. Under each group of desks sits a hub and the mice are on top of the desks. Each hub should be powered independently connected to the AC and you can see that you can put tape on the wires on the floor to make the installation clean and easy. After installation, it should look something like this, with a computer at the front of the room for the teacher to use. You can also use wireless mice. This is slightly more expensive, but perhaps an easier installation. Microsoft makes wireless mice, but also so do other manufacturers. You can see near the computer there are still some wireless receivers. Of course, for the student, it's easier to use a wireless mouse, and there are less problem. So we'll start Mighty Mice. Now you'll see a lot of pointers because every student in the classroom gets their own mouse. To designate which mouse belongs to the teacher, they have to enter a special code using the mouse clicks. The default code, which can be changed by the teacher at any time, is left, left, right, left, left, right. That automatically designates that this mouse is the teacher's mouse. So on this next screen, it allows you to select a lecture. Which PowerPoint deck do you want to show? We're going to start with Geography Day 2. Load up that deck. So the next thing the teacher needs to do is select which class list do you want to bring up. Sometimes teachers teach multiple periods in a day or different types of classes, so this will be for our English class one. And in this next screen, all of the students need to choose a pointer. So everybody can choose one character to represent them. Once everybody has chosen a pointer, the teacher goes to the next screen by using the right arrow key, and now all of the students click on their name. So we know that the brown cow is Abel, the brown bear is Catherine. Everyone can select their name. If two, two students want to share a mouse, they can click on two names. So for example, this mouse belongs to Frank and Helen. So we'll have every student select a mouse. Now that every student has selected a name, we'll go to the next screen and we'll start the slide deck. So. I'll pretend I'm the teacher, Ms. Mulcahy, teaching an 8th grade class. So I can just go through my slide deck, and whatever content I have will, sh will pop up. But whenever I want, I can turn on all of the student cursors. So for example, I could say, do you know your continents? I'll hit the Enter key, turn on everybody's cursors, and say, OK, class, can everybody put their pointer where Africa is? And all of the students can move their pointers on top of Africa. If one or two students seem to not get it, I can hit the N key and show the student's name. So I can see now Catherine might be having some trouble. Either she's not paying attention or she doesn't know where Africa is. So I can hit the Enter key again to turn everything off. Or if everyone's moving their mice at once and I want to get everyone's attention, I can hit the space bar to freeze everybody's cursors. Now, sometimes it's kind of difficult to remember all of these key commands. So the teacher can always click on this button at the bottom of the screen that's always there, and they can see the commands along the bottom. So enter shows and hides all the students' pointers. The spacebar freezes all the pointers, and then there's some other commands that we'll get, get to later. The other thing that pops up here when you click on that center button is the student list. So I can see what pointer goes with what student and what their score is. At any time, the teacher can right-click on a student score to increase it. So if you want to give Frank and Helen three points because they had so much effort in that last activity, you can. So 
If you go to the next key to go to the next slide, the next thing you can do is allow things to be draggable and droppable. So I as a teacher am going to turn bring up the student list and choose Ben to label some of the continents. So now we have Ben and we say, okay Ben, can you please label Australia? So Ben can go down, pick up the Australia tab, and label Australia. Maybe he wants to also label Europe or South America. Have him label South America. And you can have one student at a time do this. You can have turn a, just a few students on, or you can turn them all on and have them do the labeling. You could have them label oceans or whatever you want them to label that's in your PowerPoint deck. Any object you can make as draggable. The next feature that Mighty Mice has is the ability to draw on the screen. So the teacher can draw things, say I'm going to draw the prime meridian and draw it down the screen. Or she might select just one student and say can you please draw the Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn, or maybe the equator. And that student, that student can do their best to try. And if the student has trouble, they can always go up, erase what they have done, and try it again. You could have multiple students drawing on the screen at the same time. And the teacher can always hit the clear button and erase everybody's. Other things you can do have to do with the background image that you put into the PowerPoint. You can say, okay, just like we said, everyone put your pointer on top of a certain place, you might want to use uh, you might want to use a spectrum to find out how students are feeling about different topics in the class. So how confident do you feel about your knowledge of the geography of India? Well, if I turn on all the pointers, I can have all the students jump to how confident they feel. So now as a teacher, I can turn on the names and say, okay, Abel, Seven, and Frank on the left there are not feeling that confident about their knowledge of India. If, I, if the students keep moving around and I want them to have made their decision and leave it, I can hit the space bar, freeze everybody's cursors, and then we can stop and talk about it. The other thing I could do is turn, the, turn on the names, hit the letter P. At any time, if you hit the letter P, it will create a screenshot that the teacher can get back to later. So let's go to the next screen. So in this screen, we're, we're asking a multiple choice question. And there are two ways to do polling. You could have anonymous polling, or you can have the standard multiple choice polling. So if I want to do standard multiple choice, then all of the students click on what answer they think it is. After they've clicked, a couple seconds later, their choice disappears. So this is not anonymous because all of the students can see what the other students have selected. And the students don't need to do this one at a time. It's just for the sake of this demo, I don't actually have a real class in here. So the teacher can come along then. We can see that this guy still hasn't chosen. Teacher can see when all the cursors have disappeared that everybody's gone. And the teacher will come and say, well, that is Mumbai. So they're going to click that, mark that as the correct answer. And then they could bring up a chart to see how the class did. Well, if the correct answer D was Mumbai, you can see most people did get it right. But there were a significant amount of people that did not get this right. So maybe the teacher should reteach this. The other way to do multiple choice is anonymously. So I hit the enter key to toggle between anonymous multiple choice and the, the non-anonymous kind. So 